It's not so hard to recognize that Christ changed the world. Before Christ, for example, human beings were slaves to sin. No matter how hard we tried, at some point we would end up sinning, no matter how morally good we might be. After Christ, it was different, however. After Christ, it became possible for human beings to avoid sin entirely, provided they remained in Christ's grace. And not only would that grace enable us to avoid sin, but it would also empower us to act meritoriously and thus be worthy to be with God forever in heaven. One question that comes to mind though is how prepared were the people of Jesus' time for these new opportunities? An example can help illustrate the question. Take two students, one who knows French grammar and another who knows no French at all. Both of them have the potential to speak French. They're human beings after all. Yet the one who knows French grammar has the greater potential for speaking French than the one who knows no French. The one who knows French grammar is better prepared. So where did the people of Israel stand in this scheme? Well, all other things being equal, it's natural to suppose they were better prepared than the Gentiles. The people of Israel were the ones with the greatest potential. After all, God had already revealed himself to Israel. He had taken it out of bondage in Egypt. He had guided Israel into the promised land and had sent prophets to call Israel back to be faithful to the covenant. Really, all the people of Israel needed to do was identify Jesus as God and then respond accordingly to the opportunities the Lord presented to them. Yet that's not quite what happened, and we can see why in the nativity of John the Baptist. Take John's first response to our Lord. Our Lady goes to visit Elizabeth, and John leaps in Elizabeth's womb as he realizes our Lord is present in Our Lady's womb. John's great leap of joy anticipates the freedom and the dignity the faithful will enjoy in the new law of the gospel, which Christ will inaugurate. John just needed to be pointed in the direction of Christ so he would home in on him and react to him. That's the reaction we might expect if the people of Israel were ready to identify Christ as God and thus avail of the opportunities therein. Is that what happened? Well, not really. Look at John's parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth. St. Bede, in his commentary on St. Luke's Gospel, takes Elizabeth and Zachariah to represent the old law and the priesthood of the Old Testament. They are certainly good. They are in right relationship with God. But they can't bear spiritual fruit certainly not the kind of fruit that Christ will make possible. Moreover, once the angel tells Zachariah that he and Elizabeth will have a son, Zachariah can't quite bring himself to believe it and is struck dumb. They've reached a point they can't move beyond. They aren't ready to leap for joy at the presence of their savior as their son will, and they certainly aren't ready to identify Christ as God and therefore accept the opportunities he offers them. In effect, Israel's potential for accepting the opportunities our Lord offers is more remote than one might initially have thought. Yes, Israel has greater potential than the Gentile nations, 
But that potential is not as great as one might have assumed. This suggests two consequences. First, John's mission will have to be twofold. To get Israel to genuinely believe salvation is possible, and then to recognize that that salvation has come in our Lord. Second, it turns out the Gentiles are within touching distance of the opportunities of our, our Lord offers. This means no one is going to be excluded from Christ's mission unless we ourselves do that. It's all there before us. The opportunities are put in front of us and the means to accept them are there. It's up to ourselves, all people, in all times and places to respond. And if we do, then there are opportunities for us to be with God forever in heaven.